Okay, welcome to part two of our study on dispensationalism, uh, a dispensation. What is a dispensation? Um, to to uh, I'm not going to really review. This is part two. We posted part one. You have to read. You have to watch that one in order to uh, get the <clears throat> the first part. Uh, we continue on the word dispensation is mentioned in your King James Bible, the, the God's perfect word in our English language. For those of us who speak the English language, uh, it's mentioned four times. First, First Corinthians nine seventeen, Ephesians chapter number one. We we saw those two times. You can read that. You can see that in the first session. We're now in the third and fourth time that the word dispensation is used in your English Bible. Ephesians chapter number 3, verse number 1 and 2, where Paul says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote it for in few words whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now, what we want to focus on is verse 2, where he says, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you. That goes back to 1 Corinthians 9, 17. A dispensation of the gospel was committed unto Paul. Acts 20:24 20, he calls it the gospel of the grace of God. Here Paul calls it the dispensation of the grace of God. And again we saw the what a dispensation, economia, economy, administration. The Bush administration versus the Obama administration. A uh, different way of operating. Today instead of God dealing with humanity under the law as he did before Paul was saved he dealt with the nation of Israel under a performance-based acceptance system to be right in the eyes of God. God is now accepting people based upon the merits of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary by trusting his shed blood for your sins. You can have eternal life as a free gift by God's grace. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Right? Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 8 and 9. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, listen to me, as you boast. We're saved by the grace of God today, the free gift. God's riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. We're saved by grace. And so, if you trust the shed blood of Christ alone. Well, that's how God is, is dealing with humanity today, based upon his grace. Um, he's giving the free gift of eternal life for anyone who would believe. So that's Paul's message. That's the doctrine given to the Apostle Paul. If you've heard Ephesians 3, 2, of the dispensation of the grace of God given me to you. God gave it to Paul. Paul gives it out to us Gentiles, uh, to the world, to the nations. Uh, you, you read that in Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon. That's why you have to rightly divide the word of truth. We're in the dispensation of grace. Uh, most of Christianity goes to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to get their doctrine, but that's a previous dispensation. That's under the law. Okay, That's not what God is doing today. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. So again, this is the third time the word dispensation is used. It is a set of instructions or how God is relating or dealing with humanity. He's de he dealt with humanity under the law before Paul, for the dispensation of grace began with, with the Apostle Paul, 1 Timothy 1, 15 and 16. Paul says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. He's not talking about when he came as a, as a babe in a manger. He's talking about the appearance on the road to Damascus. Of whom I am chief. 1 Timothy 1, verse 15. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them who should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul is talking about the dispensation of grace. He was the chief. He was the first. He's the pattern. Saved by God's grace through faith plus no works. Just faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, in spite of your works. Christ died for the ungodly, Paul says, Romans 5. While we yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. That's the dispensation given to the Apostle Paul, our Apostle today, for us. Now, so the dispensation of the grace of God. But Paul calls it something a little bit different in Colossians, the fourth time. First time, 
1 Corinthians 9, 17, a dispensation of the gospel. Second time, uh, um, Paul says in Ephesians 1, verse 9 and 10, a dispensation of fullness of time. That's of times. That's the dispensation after ours. What God is doing today, Ephesians, the third time, Ephesians 3, 2, dispensation of the grace of God. Here, the fourth time, Colossians chapter 1, Paul again is dealing with his ministry as unique, distinct, separated apostleship and ministry and message. He says in verse 25, whereof I am made a minister, speaking for the church, the body of Christ, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me to you, for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery. Again, this mystery of Christ is the dispensation of God. In Ephesians, he calls it the dispensation of the grace of God. Here he calls it the dispensation of God. Comparing verse to verse, the gospel that was committed to Paul is the dispensation of the grace of God, the dispensation of God. The one word that describes God is gracious. God is dispensing grace. That's what dispensation is, like a soap dispenser. He's dispensing grace. What does it mean to dispense grace? He's dispensing himself through the Lord Jesus Christ. See that? That's what God is doing today. And you have to rightly divide the word of truth and make that distinction. What God is doing today began in Acts 9 with the Apostle Paul, the salvation of Saul of Tarsus, the Apostle Paul. It will continue on until the resurrection or rapture of the body of Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. After this dispensation or administration of grace is over, God's going to go back under dealing with mankind under the law like he did when he interrupted the prophetic program, the law. He's going to go back to that program. This is just a little parenthesis in the plan and purpose of Almighty God. So to sum it up, a dispensation is a certain set of instruction or administration that God is, is how God is operating uh, with humanity, with, with his creation. Today, it's, it's by God's grace through the blood of Christ on Calvary's cross. Um, he's accepting man simply based upon that and no works. After this dispensation of grace ends, in the dispensation of fullness of times, Christ will, will, will regather the heavens unto his self through the body of Christ. But here on the earth, God the Father and the Spirit will be working to accept humanity, mainly the Jew, Israel, based upon their performance-based acceptance again, okay? That won't change until, for, for Israel, until the kingdom is established and God writes his laws in their hearts. But even then, for that thousand year first installment, God will be dealing with the Gentiles, the other nations, under the law. Eventually, after the thousand year first installment of that eternal kingdom, all those who make it in or who survive or get in uh, will then be righteous. There'll be a new heaven and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hopefully this helps your understanding of dispensation. We live in God's grace. Um, grace and peace be with you, as Paul says. Um, and that comes through trusting the shed blood of Christ for your sins. And um, maybe the next time we'll, we'll do a message on clarity of the gospel of grace. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.